My four dads have always been my whole world. Growing up, they each brought something different to the table. Greg taught me how to ride a bike and plan a last minute camping trip. Martin drilled the importance of rules and a tidy room into my head. Leo, he filled my life with art and music. Oh, and David made sure I never left the house without a business card in my wallet, just in case. It wasn't your typical family, but it worked. At least, until now. Okay, there we were, our weekly Sunday dinner, but tonight, I was determined to get answers. Dad, I'm serious! I dropped my fork onto my plate, staring each of them down. Who was mom, really? And why don't any of you ever talk about her? I watched as Martin's eyes flickered with panic. Greg, who was usually so carefree, suddenly found his mashed potatoes way more interesting than me. Leo adjusted his glasses, a nervous habit. And David, well, David cleared his throat looking like he was about to give a boardroom speech. We've been through this, Zoe. She was wonderful. That's all you need to know. Seriously? That was their answer? That's not an answer! I shot back, frustration bubbling up. You're always dodging the question, like you're trying to hide something. Silence, the kind that fills up a room and chokes you. They exchanged glances like they were having a secret conversation without me. I slammed my hands on the table. Fine, if you won't tell me, I'll find out myself. I stormed out, their hushed whispers following me like a shadow. And for the first time, I realized something. Whatever they were hiding, it was big, and I was going to uncover the truth. The next morning, I woke up with one mission in mind. Get answers. If they weren't going to talk as a group, maybe I'd have better luck picking them off one by one. Greg was my first target. He was the easiest to crack, or so I thought. Hey, Dad, I said casually flopping down on the couch next to him. What was Mom like? I mean, really like? Greg grinned, his eyes lighting up. She was incredible, a whirlwind romance, you know? We traveled everywhere together. She was so full of life, always dragging me off on some adventure. Whirlwind romance? That wasn't quite the picture I had imagined, but okay. Next, I cornered Martin in his study. He sat stiffly behind his desk, a perfect picture of discipline. Dad, I began leaning against the doorframe. I'm just trying to understand more about mom. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> Your mother was steady, reliable. Our relationship was built on trust and a solid foundation. It was the long-term type, not some flighty romance. Not some flighty romance? That was definitely not the same story Greg told me. I found Leo in his art studio, covered in paint. He looked up from his canvas, eyes dreamy. Hey, Dad, what was Mom really like? I asked, trying to sound casual. Ah, oh, your mother. He sighed, a smile stretching across his face. She was a free spirit, like the wind. You could never pin her down. We used to talk for hours about dreams, art, and the mysteries of life. Wait, what? A free spirit? Not quite the steady and reliable type Martin had just described. Last up was David, the businessman. He barely looked up from his laptop as I entered. What do you remember most about mom? I asked, crossing my arms. She was a planner. He replied immediately. Always organized, had a five-year plan for everything. We had a stable, structured life together. A planner? The exact opposite of Leo's free spirit and Greg's adventure. I couldn't piece any of this together. That night, I decided to take matters into my own hands. If they wouldn't tell me the truth, maybe I could find it on my own. I snuck up to the attic, hoping for a clue. I rummaged through boxes of old junk until my hand brushed against a small metal box. Oh, dang it, it was locked. My heart raced as I picked it up, shaking it gently. I pried it open with a hairpin, and there it was! A photograph of Mom with all four of my dads! They looked so much younger, smiling like they were in on some huge secret. Near the photo was a note. I unfolded it, my hands shaking. To my dearest friends, thank you for loving me in your own ways. Our secret must remain for Zoe's sake. Ugh, ugh, a shared secret? Between all four of them? My heart pounded in my chest. I needed to know more. But this was just the beginning of a much bigger mystery. What are they hiding? And why did it involve all of them? <sighs> the house felt different after that night in the attic. Tense. Every time I brought up mom, the room would go cold. It wasn't just my dad's clamming up anymore. It was like they were hiding something from each other. Like I walked into the kitchen one morning and found Leah whispering on the phone, his back to me. 
I caught a few words. Not yet. Too risky. Before he noticed me and hung up abruptly. Hi, Zoe, he said, forcing a smile. I was just uh, talking to an old friend. Yeah, right, and I'm the Queen of England. And I caught Martin and David having a hushed conversation by the fireplace later that day. They stopped talking the second I stepped into the room, exchanging a quick, almost panicked look. What's going on? I asked, crossing my arms. You guys have been acting weird ever since I started asking questions about mom. You're imagining things, sweetheart. David replied smoothly, his expression unreadable. Imagining things? Not a chance. They were all hiding something and it was starting to unravel. And you know the strangest part? They seemed as confused as I was. I'd hear them arguing late at night, their voices barely muffled by the walls. Fragments of conversations floated through the house. You haven't told her yet, have you? No, and neither should you. It wasn't just one big secret they were keeping from me. They were keeping secrets from each other, too. And the more I pressed, the more their carefully built walls started to crack. It was becoming unbearable. I had to get to the bottom of this. My whole life, I thought I had the perfect family. But now, now I wasn't sure I even knew who they really were. I couldn't take it anymore. The lies, the secrets, the whispered conversations that stopped whenever I entered a room. I had to get answers once and for all. So I gathered them all in the living room, my heart pounding. Greg, Martin, Leo, and David sat on the couch looking uneasy. For a second, I almost chickened out, but then I remembered that photograph and the note in the attic. I want the truth, I demanded, crossing my arms. No more dodging, no more lies. I need to know who my real father is. They all exchanged glances, the tension in the room thick enough to cut with a knife. I could see they were about to brush me off again, but I wasn't having it. So I snapped. Stop! I'm tired of the secrets. I'm tired of feeling like I don't know who I am. Please, I deserve to know. For a moment, there was only silence. Then something broke in them. Greg's face crumpled, tears welling up in his eyes. Martin sighed, rubbing his temples, while Leo looked away. And David? David finally dropped the calm, business-like mask he always wore. Zoe, none of us are your biological father. I felt like the floor had been ripped out from under me. What? I was struggling to wrap my mind around his words. Then who is? We don't know. Leo admitted, his voice breaking. Your mom, your mother, she never told us. She passed away so suddenly. I stared at them, my head spinning. Then why did you lie? We didn't lie, Martin said, his tone softer than I'd ever heard it. We all loved your mom in our own ways. And when she died, she left behind a will, a request that the four of us raise you together. We became your family because that's what she wanted. My mind raced through memories of growing up, each of them playing their part. The laughter, the rules, the art, the plans. So, you're telling me that you all chose to be my dad's? You chose to be my family? They all nodded, eyes red, filled with tears. Yes, Zoe, Greg said, his voice trembling. We chose to be your family because we love you. I didn't know whether to cry, scream, or hug them all at once. My whole life, I had believed family was about blood, about some biological link. But here they were, telling me that family was about something much deeper. Love, sacrifice, and the choice they made for me. I sat down, burying my face in my hands. A part of me felt betrayed, but another, bigger part felt relieved. It would take time to process all of this. But one thing was clear. My four dads might not be my real fathers by blood, but they had become my family through something much, much stronger. Be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, and tell us in the comments about your favorite bits of this story jumping out of a book.